One of the ways to look at the performance of an economy is by focusing your attention to the finance sector performance in that economy. Talk about banking, talk about insurance. Now, today we're interested in the banking industry. Last year, the industry seems to have had a fairly good run. That is 2018, 2019. When you look at the numbers of Standard Big Bank, for instance, it is comfortably sitting above 100 billion shillings in profits made for that year. But we're about to find out whether this is actually a true representation of how this economy is faring. John, it's good to have you on the show, Money and Markets, and we treasure your company, always. Now, I'm sure you've seen the numbers released by the banking industry. What do you make of them? I think the industry is performing very well. If you look at the mainstream financial sector, the mainstream, the tier one commercial banks, they're doing very well. Uh, the, in terms of the capital that they have to cover the, 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 the liabilities and so on, they're doing very well on capital adequacy. They're doing very well on bringing down their non-performing loans. They're cleaning up their balance sheets. They're posting greater profits. There's an increase in the demand for private sector credit. Uh, so all these things combined means that the sector is posted for growth and, uh, and, 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 and improvement. And maybe this is also because of uh, the inflation targeting strategies that the central bank has adopted, all these are starting to have an impact. impact and you're trying to see, you're, you're seeing now uh, a leaf turning, um, and you're seeing great, um, great prospects for these commercial banks. Now, looking at the performance of the industry, and what can SMEs pick from that journey that the banking industry has made? Well, what the SMEs can learn is that every industry will be challenged at a particular point in time. As you know, a few years ago with the advent of fintech, many people were starting to write off the mainstream banking sector. As you know, in Europe, all these banks have closed. There are no longer branches and so on. So people fail to know what the mainstream banking sector is unprofitable, the conditions are bad, they are gone. See? But they have been able to reinvent themselves. How? They've been able to um, piggy bank on the mobile money services. They've been able to bring on to innovate and bring on board agency banking so these kinds of initiatives coupled with a very deliberate strategy by the central bank to target inflation i think has meant that they've been able to turn a leaf so i think what smes should learn is that if you're challenging your business the the way out of that is not to exit the business it's to innovate it's to look for new initiatives look for look for what does the market want and then you try to uh, try to come up with a new service offering that meets, meets those needs. Yeah. And, um, going back to the aspect of gaps within yes. the SMEs, yes. how do we make our SMEs benefit or derive more dividend yes. or support and benefit from the finance? So the increase in the demand for private sector credit from commercial banks is an in indication of a sector that is growing and is in need of money. Mm -hmm. That is one way to look at it. The other way to look at it is that, in fact, the sector is struggling so much and because they fail to find alternative sources of, of finance, they have to go to commercial banks even when the conditions there are unfavorable. So you can look at it both ways. But what is clear is that you're experiencing a certain level of growth within the private sector, driven by the service industry. And that's what people ought to know, that there are certain industries that are generating growth more than others, especially services. And that's where we, you know, we speak to young people and professionals and things like that. You don't need to have a shop. For, for us to call you a businessman, you don't need... And this notion of a briefcase businessman does not exist. Because these days the business may be in your head. The important thing is, can you be able to deliver a, a good service? It's not a brick and mortar concept. It's not a brick and mortar concept. Hear you. Now, let's look at, um, of course, looking at the performance of the banking industry. Yes. Vis-a-vis -vis the performance of SMEs. Correct. Do you see that growth, you know, uh, like you know, moving in tandem with growth in the SME side of things. And if not, um, where do you think are the loopholes? Where are the gaps? So I think what we need to, we need to strike a balance. We need to look at manufacturing because manufacturing is very critical. We cannot be a, an economy that depends on imports. This is a very dangerous strategy, most so if you are landlocked economy. We must look at agriculture. At the very least, we must be food secure. Um, I don't believe, I, I know the people say agriculture is the backbone of the economy and so on, but I don't believe it's going to be the driver of, uh, for future growth. This may come from other, other areas, in my opinion. However, we should ensure that the in the agricultural sector we are competitive, we are productive, and we are 
we are not importing things. Yeah, at the very least, we should be able to say, you know what, we're an agricultural country, a fertile country, let's make sure that we are self-sufficient in terms of the food that we eat and we're able to export. And then we're also able to add value because this is the basis. We can't say, well, let's all shift to the service industry without sorting out the constraints in the agricultural sector and the manufacturing sector. Now, I want to go back to the gaps. I mean, what still makes it hard for the uh, banking industry to actually work? A little closer with the SMEs. Now, I think we need to diversify the service portfolio in this country in terms of financial services because we are extremely dependent on debt that is offered by mainstream commercial banks. However, we need to look at alternatives. We need to look at equity. How do you get a thriving uh, angel investment, a group of angel investors, people who can invest in other businesses? The challenge I have is that you have people with money and they are tying it down in real estate. Okay? On the other hand, you have young people with innovative businesses that don't have access to finance. So how can we intermediate that? Because that's the role of a functional financial system. How do you intermediate people with money, with those who need it, and then create a fair, a, a, a fair operating ground so that this individual will get repaid when this business picks up? So I think that is where we are lacking. We need to diversify the portfolio of financial products that we offer. Thank you very much, John. <laughs> You're welcome. Always a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for having me.